Hey guys, uh, today's first question in this set of current affairs um, is on the Sri Lankan Prime Minister. This is the new guy, Dinesh Gunavardhana, and uh, he belongs to a political party which is a leftist political party. Okay, Mahajana Ek Saat Perumuna. Now, the thing is here, the country is in deep trouble. There is a lot of uh, angst among the common people because of extraordinarily large amount of inflation like you know price rise has been a major issue that has uh, eaten into the quality of life of people now why there is a price rise an abnormal see the current inflation rate is around 55 percent official unofficial it could be somewhere around 100 100 percent so if you look at uh, you know the price rise uh, uh, that's a consequence of uh, uh, you know the policies of the government of Sri Lanka in the past in the over the last two years I think I had discussed this in detail great detail as to what caused the crisis so I will not go back into discussing that uh, to discussing that crisis but this guy is a new pre, you know, prime minister and uh, while the prime minister is there uh, the more effective position is that of the president because Sri Lanka is a presidential you know, um, you know, Sri Lanka has a presidential system, and the president there is Ranil Vikramasinghe. Ranil Vikramasinghe, as you would be familiar with this name, wouldn't you be? Yeah, I'm sure um, you would be familiar with this name, Ranil Vikramasinghe. This guy is a you know typically pro-India fellow, Ranil Vikramasinghe. Now you need to understand something. Before he became, became the president, he was the prime minister. Okay. So this is a country that is deep in trouble. And uh, maybe um, I would suggest that you go back to your notes that I shared with you a few days back on the crisis in Sri Lanka. If not, then the focus of two, the next two classes that will be sometime next week uh, will be one. The India-Pakistan border dispute. Uh, I know that I wanted to discuss that, but I didn't discuss. So one, I will discuss the India-Sri Lanka border dispute, uh, especially with regard to the LOC, the line of control. And I will also discuss the Taiwan-China issue. One of my favorite areas to discuss is, you know, the Taiwan crisis. Now, Taiwan is one, then I love to discuss Israel-Palestine, um, the European tinderbox areas of Serbia, Croatia, those areas. These things, conflict zones have fascinated me. I suggest you read a bit on these things because conflicts often determine the, you know, often shapes the world around us. Okay. So, um, next week, two issues will be do would dominate uh, the our classes. One, the Taiwan crisis, and two, India Pakistan border dispute with regard to the LOC. Okay. And yes, if necessary, if you would want me to repeat what we've learned in, uh, you know, um, uh, about Sri Lanka in the past, please send a mail or share your feedback. I'll back, bring back notes on that as well. I'll reduce the number of questions. We'll bring it down to 15 or so. So we we'll get some more time, squeeze that time in through, you know, by taking effective notes. So Sri Lanka's Prime Minister with this and what about Nepal? Nepal is, um, you know, um, Sher Bahadur Dioba. That's a Prime Minister. Bhutan Lote Sharing. Is all these countries are in, in India's neighborhood, okay, except Thailand, because India and Thailand don't share a direct border, okay. Of course, yeah, Philippines as well. Philippines is very, very far. We'll discuss Philippines in a while, okay. And the Prime Minister here is Prayut or Pradyut, you could write Pradyut also. Prayut Chan O Cha, okay. This is Thailand. Hmm? Philippines, um, 
Bong Bong Marcos. Bong Bong Marcos. That's the president's name. Bong Bong Marcos. Nickname, but that's how it is used in the press. Okay. Whom the following persons is are have been named the 2022 Global Energy Prize laureate by the Global Energy Association. All of these guys, and this is the photography. The person in the photography is Kaushik Rajashekara. Uh, Kaushik Rajashekara is an Indian. Of course, he's an you know, no, you know born in India, but citizen of the U.S. now. Uh, Kaushik uh, Professor Kaushik. Um, holds he did his he studied his he had his entire education in india his bsc uh, uh, bachelor of engineering that is bachelor of engineering bachelor of uh, sorry bachelor of engineering master of engineering and phd all were from the indian institute of science the indian institute of science so three major disciplines you know um, that makes him a world renowned energy expert especially on transportation issues okay electrification in transportation he is a global expert in that and um, he had his entire education in india from the indian institute of science fair see when we talk of energy we restrict ourselves to our discussion on electricity current supply at home in the office in the workplaces and all but today there is the use of electricity everywhere i mean electric medium everywhere you have this in electric vehicles especially electric vehicles yeah uh, evs electric vehicles are a rage these days but there are consequences of ev themselves okay see like for example people often um, the vegans uh, they talk of you know they 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 stoked a controversy a few days a few years back when they said that amul should not uh, um sell you know uh, natural milk because that would be you know that would be harming the cows the buffaloes and all so you need to understand that they come from their perspective you know their, their ideology is that you know you're harming the environment the milk of the cow is for the calf not for humans agreed but they said we should amus should switch to plant-based milk now, plant-based milk is full of chemicals, which is more dangerous. Yeah, we need to appreciate all these things. This is these are things that, you know that are not black and white. There are a lot of gray areas, maybe fifty shades of gray. Okay, read a bit, you know, a bit here, a bit there. Make your own ideas. Don't blindly follow people who you know they have might who might have an agenda at play. Okay. Which country recently declared that it will quit the International Space Station after 2024? It will be Russia. So I want you to write a bit about the International Space Station. Please write this. Launch 1998. Launch 1998. Second point. Largest artificial object in space. Largest artificial object in space next multinational cooperation or collaboration multinational collaboration project multinational collaboration project involving nasa nasa you know this you know nasa which is the American Space Agency, then ESA, European Space Agency, then the Russian Space Agency is Roscosmos, Russia, and Canadian Space Agency, Can Canadian Space Agency. Okay, next. Next point has two segments. Has two segments comprises two segments. One, one, Ru Russia orbital segment and 
you can say Russia or Russian, both are fine. Yeah? No harm, absolutely no harm. As long as you get the country's name right. Russian orbital segment and and United States orbital segment. United States orbital segment. Next. Circles the Earth. Circles the Earth orbits. The Earth in 93 minutes. 93 minutes. In brackets, 15.5 15.5 orbits per day. 15.5 orbits per day. So Russia has said that they will quit this. Um, see, before the ISS came, Russia had its own space agency. Of course, in those days, it was um, uh, the Soviet Union that built the MIR, M -I -R, okay? But um, Russia says we will no longer be a part of the ISS after 2024 and that we plan to build our own space station, our own space station or they may take the help of the Chinese space station, Tiangong. Okay. Uh, see, things have been going pretty badly between um, Russia and, uh, you know, Western Europe as well as uh, America over Ukraine. So somewhere this crisis are taking their toll on um, this crisis is taking its toll on uh, you know space cooperation also. Okay, citing less favorable external conditions and rapid policy tightening by the Reserve Bank of India, the International Monetary Fund slashed India's growth forecast to 7.4 percent for its earlier from its earlier estimate of 8.2 percent. Now that's a substantial drop, but 7.4% 4, 7 is still higher than RBI's own estimate of 7.2%. The RBI estimates a growth to be 7.2%, whereas the IMF says it's likely to be 7.4%. Now, um, that still 7.4% as, as what the IMF projects will still make India the fastest growing large economy in the world fastest growing large economy this 7.4 percent means we are going to add you know 7.4 percent of our G, you know of the gdp in 22 21 okay so the whatever the gdp was in 2021-23 sorry i'm so sorry 21-22 let's say it was 100 rupees reference sake 100 rupees we are going to add 7.4 percent of 100 you know and by the end of this financial year we would have 107.4 percent four with the apps you know total gdp of india okay 100 plus 7.4 percent of 100 will be the total gdp of india by the end of this financial year but what conditions are we discussing here? What external conditions? Well, the world over, there has been policy tightening in terms of interest rates, in terms of um, easing money supply. Um, because there is widespread inflation. Some countries' inflation has spiraled, you know, crazily. Inflation has gone up drastically. Uh, there are multiple reasons why inflation has gone up. One is, of course, a rise in fuel prices. Two, a rise in demand for goods and services. Three, uh, shortage of uh, key components because of the disruptions in supply chain. So all of these, and sometimes in some places of the world, like for example, um, the Ukraine con because of the Ukraine conflict, food grain supply has gone down, especially wheat supply has gone down, uh, which also means that the price of wheat will, you know, will spike, will spike in other parts of the world. This will have its own impact, cascading impact on other things. Now, you need to appreciate the fact that because of, you know, supply constraints, because of demand, cons demand issues and all, you know, um, central banks everywhere have been forced to raise interest rates. As interest rates are, you know, raised, um, money, you know, um, see when interest rates are raised, what happens is that loans become expensive. Loans become expensive. So if you're taking a home loan, then you have to pay more EMI, higher EMI. 
so your outgo there is on the higher side which would cut the amount of money you would have with you for you know other expenses so your aggregate demand would go down that's the idea second thing in terms of companies when let's say i want to borrow money to build a new factory so my loans have become expensive when loans become expensive i try to cut down on my own ambitions and everything so i may not take that loan or i may take a smaller loan the which would mean smaller demand for goods and services which also would you know lead to moderation in demand consequently the prices might decrease that's the idea but is it so simple not really things are likely to be tough in the days to come so i would suggest buckle up okay things will get worse from here they will only get worse they will not get better at least not in this year yeah things are likely to be very poor very bad europe will see very high inflation in the days to come especially because the winter approaches because they are cutting down on um, gas imports from uh, russia and russia is their primary supplier russia is a primary supplier for to a lot of european countries and um, while they may ask us to not buy russian oil they themselves are buying oil and gas from russia especially gas things are likely to be pretty bad my friends in the days to come so it is important that you not spend recklessly okay but then if you don't spend recklessly then the aggregate demand for goods and services in india will decrease which would mean that producers won't have enough incentive to produce because the demand has is not there when there is no production consequently employment potential also decreases which means that people don't have opportunities which means that people don't have money which means that people don't have purchasing power which means that you know the demand for goods and services will decrease and consequently prices might may or may not decrease but overall economic activity will decrease which is bad for everyone involved hmm so <laughs> i know i go went a bit like this that this this how economics is everything is connected everything is connected okay so uh you see this everywhere you see china is likely to grow at 3.3% but i doubt even 3.3% will work because china's 3.3% uh, this is on the very high side i believe the china's growth could be around uh, and i when i say i believe i do a lot of homework okay i read extensively i look at the data and everything whatever i quoted now is all data okay um china's growth would be on the higher side it if it's 2% yeah. things are very very bad in china that is why today we live in a world where if china sneezes the commodities market in the world would catch cold if china's growth slows you know countries like zambia chile Bolivia they would suffer ma- majorly why because these companies sell a lot of commodities especially copper iron ore and all to china if china's demand goes down these countries will be in pretty bad shape yeah so we live in a very different world earlier it used to say that if america would sneeze america sneezes the world would catch cold okay but today if china sneezes the world would catch cold that's how the story is yeah uh, see a economically weak china is bad news for the world but an economically weak china could mean good things militarily for the world could also mean bad things for the neighborhood like for example if ama if chinese economy slows down okay then the government of china led by xi jinping would divert the people's attention to nationalism nationalism issues you know like uh, raising the border dispute with india upping the you know sending people to occupy our territory bhutan's territory then they 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 they, they already occupied some part of nepal yeah i mean this is how they are they may ratchet up the tension over taiwan so that people of china would be distracted towards that and not focus on things that impact them actually that is you know growth economic growth okay so many things 
I I would love to discuss all these things, but we don't have enough time for all these things. And this is what interests me. See, these are all fact-based things. I may tell you, okay, theek hai. you look at Wipro, Wipro's uh, the answer, who's the CEO of Wipro. All those things are fine. But if we are to discuss well, then there is, we, we, we dis- want to discuss Taiwan, we would need a lot of background information. Yeah, that's why I said, you know, um, things are, will, 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 you know, we need time. These things need time. And next week, I'll discuss Taiwan and the India-Pakistan border dispute. I don't want to rush. Okay. So, uh, which Indian IT giant has recently announced a five-year contract with uh, Nokia for digital transformation? Um, see, your elders and you know, um, folks like me, we started our phone journeys, cell phone journeys with Nokia. Most of us had a Nokia phone in those days. Okay, um, Nokia double three one zero, Nokia double three one five, double one double zero. I mean, that is how we all started using mobile phones. Nokia was in the hands of almost all Indians. World over, actually. At one time, it was the world's largest mobile maker. But things such have changed now. Okay. Um, Nokia did not adapt itself to smartphone revolution very fast. When iPhone came in 2007, Nokia was like, come on, who would buy an iPhone? It's so expensive. You know, it's for the elite. And it's not something that people really need now. Okay. But what happened today? You know, while Nokia ignored the smartphone revolution, people, you know, bought Apple in droves, Apple's iPhone in droves, large numbers. And over a period of time, Nokia was sidelined because it did not adapt itself to changing, you know, industry standards. This is what might happen to us if we don't learn. We need to learn. We need to adapt ourselves to our competition and do better than them. That's how it is. Hmm? So, Wipro CEO is um, Thierry Delaporte. Thierry, it's a very large company, Wipro. Tech Mahindra, Chandar Prakash Gurnani. Chandar Prakash Gurnani. Chandra Prakash Kurnani, Mind Tree, Debashish Chatterjee, Debashish Chatterjee, Chatterjee, you can write on your own, simple word, TCS, Tata Consultancy Services, Rajesh Gopinathan, Rajesh Gopinathan, Rajesh Gopinathan, yeah, Rajesh Gopinathan. Infosys, Salil Parekh, the CEOs of India's, some of India's best IT companies. Okay. Uh, Nokia is today is a 22 billion euro company. It's not an ordinary company, my friends. 22 billion, you can make 23 do- billion dollar company. Okay. This is headquartered in a place called Espoo in Finland. Finland and uh, it's headquartered in sorry it's it's headed by Pekka Lundmark okay next the income tax department is governed by the CBDT Central Board of Direct Taxes Central Board of Direct Taxes Central Board of Direct Taxes. Central Board of Direct Taxes is headed by Nitin Singh. Nitin Singh or Nitin Sinha? No, 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 it's not Nitin Singh and Singh. It's Nitin Gupta. <laughs> oh boy. Nitin Gupta. Nitin Gupta. Nitin Gupta. Please write Nitin Gupta. Next. 
Um, see, there are two major bodies here. One is direct taxes here. Indirect taxes is there. And now, see, in, in the past it was called the Central Board of Excise and Customs. Okay. Now this is called Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs. You could write this. Central Bo Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs. And Customs. Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, headed by Vivek Johri. Vivek Johri. So, Central Board of Direct Taxes, headed by Nitin Gupta, while CBIC, which is the Central Board of Indirect Taxes and Customs, but previously called Central Board of Excise and Customs, is headed by Vivek Johari. Vivek Johari. Okay. The market structure in which there are few large sellers of a commodity and large number of buyers is called oligopoly. So, large buyers, large sellers. Oligopoly. Okay. Now, what is monopoly? Monopoly. A market where there is one seller and large number of buyers. Large number of buyers. Okay. Then there is something called monopsony. This is monopsony. Not many people know this. Here there is one buyer and large number of sellers good example indian railways indian railways is the only buyer of rails fish plates made by a large number of sellers okay defense equipment indian army or indian defense services are the only forces that can buy are the only buyer of defense equipment manufactured in India yeah, by Indian companies I mean to sell they can't sell to others in India they can sell only to defense companies or defense of forces okay one seller large number of buyers you would say IRCTC Indian Railway Catering and you know uh, Tourism Corporation okay so they sell tickets and they are the only people authorized to sell tickets while we are the people who buy. That's a monopoly they have, IRCTC. Okay, I guess that's a fair way of looking at it. Which of the following is not a part of unregulated non-bank financial intermediaries? Havala operators, loan companies, Gully Corner loan companies, money lenders, they're all unregulated market. Okay. But commercial trade bills, you know, you have commercial bills, they could be bought and sold over the counter only at authorized centers like banks and all that stuff. Okay. Bills of exchange, promissory notes, discount papers, invoices. Invoices could be pre sold also. Okay. The basis for determining dearness allows, allowance uh, to employees in India is what is that? It is a consumer price index CPI. So please write de dearness allowance. Dearness allowance. See if something becomes dear, it becomes expensive. If you say it cost me dear, it means it costs you a lot of money. Okay. So the word dear could mean different things. So write dearness allowance dash component of. Central governments, central government employees, each employee. Central government employees, salary paid to, paid to compensate for increase in 
cost of living for increase in cost of living due to inflation due to inflation due to inflation i repeat component of central government employee salary to compensate for uh, for the rise or the increase in cost of living due to inflation okay next point there are around there are around 40 lakh sorry 47 i guess um 47 lakh right 47 lakh government employees central government employees there are around 47 lakh government employees central government employees and around and around 47 lakh central government employees and around 69 lakh pensioners central government pensioners pensioners the exact number is 68.6 lakh but i made it 69 it's okay okay yeah so dearness da they call it da yeah it's a major thing private government employees don't private sector employees don't get it which of the following is the biggest stock exchange in India in terms of amounts of transactions? National stock exchange. See, I wrote some notes here for you. So I, it was difficult for me to remember this. So usual things are easy to remember. These are things that are latest. And what I would want you to write is this. National stock exchange. Underline that first point. Established 1993. Established 1993. Second point, second point, India's biggest stock exchange by turnover, by turnover. Next, CEO, expert this question in the exams, CEO, Ashish Kumar Chauhan Ashish Kumar Chauhan Next Main index Next point Main index Called Nifty Called Nifty So I am going to share this data that I have Okay Next right Trading data for Trading data for July 2022 July 2022 Okay July 2022 next below that point 1 21 trading days Twenty one days the stock exchange was open. So it's closed on Saturdays and Sundays. Okay. And of course public holidays. Twenty one trading days. Next. Uh, monthly turnover nine point seven eight lakh crore. <laughs> hey, this is rupees, huh? Rupees nine point seven eight lakh crore means shares worth 9.78 lakh crore were bought and sold 10 lakh crore shares were bought and sold in july next daily turnover daily turnover average daily turnover 46.6 thousand crore 46.6 thousand crore hmm? This is a lot of money that is changing hands, isn't it? Yes 
so write leave one line space right nsc national stock exchange sorry bsc bombay stock exchange i'm so sorry bombay stock exchange bombay stock exchange right first point established 1875 established 1875 second point second point um originally called originally called the native the native stock and share brokers association the native stock and share brokers association the native stock and share brokers association you wrote there uh, a while ago you wrote um, the the in 1875 when it was established put a dash there asia's oldest stock exchange continuing that line asia's oldest stock exchange 1875 dash Asia's oldest stock exchange. Okay. Yeah. So currently it has no CEO. There's no CEO. Okay. They're looking for it because this Ashish Kumar Chauhan, the CEO of National Stock Exchange was earlier the CEO of BSC. So from BSC he moved to NSC and BSC currently is, you know, has the CEO's office vacant. Okay, chalo, from here, let's go. Yeah, the main index, uh, the main index you can write, main index is Sensex. In brackets, sensitivity index, sensitivity index, sensitivity index of share price of share price sensitivity index of share price who among the following persons was team india's flag bearer at the 2022 commonwealth games pusarla venkata sindhu pusarla venkata sindhu Harman Preet Kaur is a cricketer, Hima Das an athlete, uh, yeah, runner, Neeraj Chopra, Javin Thrower and um, Mirabai Chanu, weightlifter, yeah. So, Pusarla Venkata Sindhu. So, I think we'll come back to this little later. We'll discuss Commonwealth Games in a while, okay. Which UN backed agencies issued the first ever global policy framework to protect children and displaced due to climate change? All of them. We'll write about two. One, sorry, A and P. Right. International Organization for Migration. International Organization for Migration. International Organization for Migration. First point. Advisors. Governments advises governments on migration policies. On migration policies. Second point head office Geneva G E N E V A G E N E V A. Third point Director General Antonio. Vitorino of Portugal. Vitorino of Portugal. Okay. Next. UNICEF. The UN Children's Fund. Head office, New York City. New York City. And the Secretary General is 
Catherine Russell. Catherine Russell of US. US. Okay. Cool. The International Tiger Day is observed on 29th July across the world. Which of these following statements, which of the following statements are true? All of them are true, but there are a few things I want you to write. Please write. Tiger population in India. Tiger population in India as per 2018 census. As per 2018 census. 2967 tigers. Though the number here is slightly different, I believe, I will believe the government of India. Why will I believe some foreign agency? Yeah. 2967. Next. Um, top three states. Top three states. Madhya Pradesh. 526 tigers. Karnataka. 524 tigers. Uttarakhand. 442 tigers. 442 tigers. See, you Madhya you have Kanha, you have Bandavgad, okay, two major ones. Then Panna, um, Karnataka is home to Bandipur. You have Uttarakhand, Corbett National Park, major ones actually. Hmm? If you want one more, right? One more thing you could write. India has 50 tiger reserves. India has 50 tiger reserves. You can also write Project Tiger. Project Tiger was launched in 1973. 1973. See, nearly 80% of the world's tigers are in India. Yes. The Union Cabinet has approved a project for the saturation of 4G, fourth generation mobile services in uncovered villages across the country at an expense of nearly 26,000 crore. This project will be executed by Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited. Bharat Sanchar Nigam Limited is headed by Praveen Purwar. Praveen Kumar Purwar. Bharati Airtel, Gopal Vittal, Reliance Geo, Akash Ambani, Vodafone Idea has a new CEO, Akshay Mundra, Akshaya Mundra. Akshaya Mundra. Okay. Which institution introduced a new scheme to provide enhanced export credit risk insurance cover up to 90% to support small exporters? The ECGC, which is the Export Credit Guarantee Corporation of India. It provides credit insurance. It provides export insurance. Insurance to exporters, basically. Okay. It's headed by T. Santil Nathan. Santil Nathan. T. Sentil Nathan. Iridai. See, this is in New Delhi. You want the head office? New Delhi. Iridai. Head office, Hyderabad. Hyderabad. And the new chairperson of Iridai is Debashish Panda. Debashish Panda. Then Small Industries Development Bank of India, Lucknow. Headed by Siva 
सुब्रमण्यम कुमार सॉरी रामन शिव सुब्रमण्यम रामन शिव सुब्रमण्यम रामन ठीक है नेक्स्ट नाबार्ड हेड ऑफिस मुंबई हेड ऑफिस मुंबई आई एम सो सॉरी आई एम राइटिंग द शॉर्ट फॉर्म बट एनीवे हेड ऑफिस मुंबई एंड हेडेड बाय चिंतला गोविंद राजुलू गोविंद राजुलु ओके आईडीबीआई बैंक इट्स कॉल्ड आईडीबीआई बैंक आईडीबीआई बैंक डैश सब्सिडियरी ऑफ एल आई सी सब्सिडियरी ऑफ एल आई सी आई एम सो सॉरी सब्सिडियरी ऑफ एल आई सी हेडेड बाय राकेश शर्मा चेयरमैन राकेश शर्मा एंड हेड ऑफिस इन मुंबई हेड ऑफिस इन मुंबई टू विच कंट्रीज प्रेसिडेंट हैज ब्रिटिश प्राइम मिनिस्टर बोरिस जॉनसन रिसेंटली प्रेजेंटेड द सर विंस्टन चर्चिल रिच अवार्ड जेलेंस्की द प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यूक्रेन प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ यूक्रेन सी यू जस्ट राइट विंस्टन चर्चिल PM of point one PM UK UK nineteen forty two forty five and fifty one to fifty five. Okay, so he was twice Prime Minister of Britain, and you can also write nineteen fifty three Nobel Prize for Literature. Nobel Prize for Literature. Nobel Prize for Literature. He hated Indians. He was against granting independence to India. Xi Jinping, President of China. Biden, United States. Yoon Suk Yeol, South Korea. South Korea, which is south of North Korea. रिसिप तयीब अर्दोहान तुर्की न्यू नेम ऑफ टर्की तुर्की ओके हियर ऑल्सो देर इज सेवेंटी एट परसेंट इन्फ्लेशन एज अ टूडे वेरी बैड थिंग्स आर वेरी बैड प्रणय कुमार वर्मा हैज रिसेंटली बीन अपॉइंटेड इंडिया नेक्स्ट हाई कमिश्नर टू बांग्लादेश नो आई आई रिटर्न दिस क्वेश्चन वर्ड हाई कमिश्नर देर high commissioner is a diplomat normally a representative of one country in another country is called an ambassador okay india has an ambassador to the us but has a high commissioner to bangladesh why high commissioner is a term used in commonwealth countries commonwealth countries those countries which are members of the commonwealth group of nations have high commissioners have their national diplomats called high commissioners and not ambassadors that's it so high commissioner is a term used in countries to 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 denote an ambassador of one country to denote an ambassador of one country that's it so remember this high commissioner equals dip, you know ambassadors that's it they use a different term that's about it nothing else hmm i think we've been discussing this country so we'll not go there the 11th agriculture census was recently launched by the minister for agriculture and farmer and farmers welfare narendra singh tomar the census is conducted once every 5 years once every Five years. If I'm not wrong, the world's biggest. See, this is animal census, now. The world's biggest cow population is in India. World's biggest cow population is in India. World's biggest goat population is also in India. I think. 
okay the world's biggest pig 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 population is in china yeah. okay in china because pork is a staple food the government of china owns huge pork farms because during festival time the demand for pork goes up and if the supply is less it could lead to a serious escalation in price which would be which would make create social tension for the communist party of china okay to avoid such a possibility the government of china owns huge farms of pork okay i mean of pigs so these are basically backup farms backup farms the world is a crazy place India's first indigenous aircraft carrier Vikrant was recently delivered to the Indian Navy. The case, this carrier was built by Cochin Shipyard Limited. You see this is Vikrant. In the background is INS Kolkata. INS Kolkata. So INS Vikrant, I want you to write a bit about this. Please write. Okay, please write. Um, INS Vikrant in brackets 2013. Please write this. Okay, INS Vikrant 2000 or latest or new. You can write new also. New. Underline that first point. Named after, named after India's first aircraft carrier. India's first aircraft carrier with the same name. With the same name. Same name. Next. Next point. The old IAC, the old IAC aircraft carrier was purchased from the UK in 1957 commissioned in 1961 and decommissioned in 1997 this is my map see i think i'm right here yeah so it was purchased from the uk now did uk have did we buy a brand new one no 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 this was an aircraft carrier that was built in 1945 it was retired two years later in 47 till 49 it was lying in in a harbor so the government of india said we will buy this. So we bought this in 57. Four years of work happened in, you know, in uh, what is it, you know, making it you know, uh, adapting, you know, adaptable to Indian conditions. So in 61, we commissioned it. It came into the sea, you know, air aircrafts and everything. And from 61 till 97, it was there. And it played a major role in the 1971 India-Pakistan war over Bangladesh. Okay. That's one. Two, um, I want you to know one more thing here that uh, the new aircraft carrier, you please write this. The new aircraft carrier, the new INS Vikrant, the new INS Vikrant, the new INS Vikrant was built by or built by the Cochin Shipyards Limited. Cochin Shipyard Limited. Full stop. The first keel, you could say, nail. Okay. The first keel was in was in 2009. 2009 keel. 2009, comma, launched in, so main work started in 2013 and commissioned in 2022. See, initially we thought it would cost 500 crore dollars, 0.5 billion dollars. It now costs 3.3 billion dollars. Sometimes it's cheaper to import, but then we shouldn't rely on imports. We should try to cut down. Hmm? So, 
this is a little about the INS Vikrant. So this will be our second, you know, aircraft carrier. The first is INS Vikramaditya. It's still, it's, it's already there. INS Vikramaditya is the other aircraft carrier of India. INS Vikramaditya. Okay. Which Tiger Reserve played host to the National Tiger Reserve, National Tiger Day celebrations 2022? Tadoba. Tadoba is in Maharashtra. It's in Maharashtra. Okay. I think we already mentioned that there are 50 Tiger Reserves in India. Okay. That the Project Tiger was launched in 1973. That India has 2967 Tigers, of which MP leads with 526. Karnataka comes a close second with 524 and Uttarakhand in the third place with 442 Tigers. Okay. Now, a few more things here. You look at this Corbett. Corbett National Park. Corbett National Park or Jim Corbett National Park is India's oldest national park. India's oldest national park. India's oldest national park. Okay. Bandavgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Sundarban, West Bengal, Rantanpur, Rajasthan. According to the latest edition of Brand Footprint Study, which brand retained its position as India's top FMCG brand in 2021? What is FMCG? Fast moving consumer goods fast moving consumer goods see consumer goods are final goods that we buy for direct use a toothpaste okay a toothpaste is bought directly for direct consumption we don't use it as a raw material for anything no shampoo not that i use shampoo okay <laughs> so um shampoo soap bars cigarettes biscuits chocolates these are called consumer goods now some of these goods have a very high demand consequently they keep moving off the shelf pretty fast that's why these are called fast moving consumer goods okay companies like unilever nestle godrej yeah, they are, you know, uh, FMCG companies. Now, of these, which is India's best brand? Parley G. G money genius. Not really. G, it is believed, stands for glucose. Parley G stands for glucose. I think there is this dialogue in this uh, film called Welcome. It's a, hum to us desh mein rate hai, jaan biscuit ko bhi hum G karke bulate hai. <laughs> Parleji. So, Parleji is uh, G for glucose. And, um, you know, it was a company that was, it's it's a privately held company, Parley Group. It's owned by the Chauhan family. Chauhan family. Amul is Anand Milk Union Limited. Anand Milk Union Limited. You know, this company, Amul, has a turnover of around 40,000 crores. It's a dairy, cooperative dairy. Okay. It has a turnover of around 40,000 crore per annum. Amazing, no? Yeah. So, Britannia is a company owned by the Varia family. Varia. The chairperson is a guy called Nasli Varia. Nasli Wadia. He is a grandson of Muhammad Ali Jinnah. Yeah. Jinnah's only child was a daughter, and um, daughter's son is Nasli Wadia. Maybe, because I think I told you the love story of Muhammad Ali Jinnah in the past, and if necessary, I'll, if, if, you know, if you're interested, I'll tell you later. Okay? So. This is number one brand. In the order in which these are mentioned, these are the brands, top brands, okay? Top five brands. Parleji, Amul, Britannia, Clinic Plus, 
大岛。With the aim of making the women of the state aware of their constitutional rights and laws, which state, um, which CM launched the Mukhya Mantri Mahatari Nyay Rat, not CM state. It is Chhattisgarh. So women normally are at the receiving end of a lot of things in India, unfortunately. And uh, this particular state government has launched a scheme where women will be made aware of through you know campaigns. You know, villages and towns and all. One truck would go. I mean, one 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 car, one 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 van would go with two advocates and social workers, who would appraise women of the, look. These are your rights and everything. Okay, and they could also the women could also submit their petitions here. So Chhattisgarh government and the government of Chhattisgarh is led by Bhupesh Baghel. Bhupesh. Baghel, Haryana, Manohar Lal Khattar, the state with India's high lowest sex ratio, lowest sex ratio, Haryana, Jharkhand, it has had more CMs than many other places. The CM is Hemant Soren, Hemant. Soren, India's most populous state, Uttar Pradesh. Most populous state with highest population in Punjab. State with the highest percentage of scheduled caste population as percentage of total population. State with the highest. Scheduled caste population as percentage of total population. Usually, I give the names of CMs and everything, but this time it's slightly different. Yeah. Chhattis means thirty-six. Gad means Kila Fort, F O R T, the land of thirty-six forts, Chhattisgarh. Fidel Ramos, who died recently from COVID-19 complications, was the president of Philippines. You see this country? I told you we will discuss Philippines in a while. This is Philippines. You see? Yeah. This was a country governed, you know, colonized by Spain between 1568. I'm so sorry. 1568 to 1898. Spain ruled it. Spain, okay. That year, in 1898, that is, America defeated Spain in the war, and this went to the U.S. between 19, sorry, 1898 to 1946. Now it's an independent country. Its capital is Manila. Capital is Manila. The capital of Malaysia. There are two, Kuala Lumpur and Putrajaya, which is a part of the city of Kuala Lumpur, but slightly, slightly on the outskirts. Okay, this is his. Okay, this is Singapore here. You can see here, yeah, third one, Singapore city at the tip of the Malaysian Peninsula. Okay. Thailand. This is. Let me clear this. This is Thailand. So these are all Buddhist. In fact, this area has historically been called. Uh, I think uh, I just. Oh, this entire thing has gone out. Never mind. I think we'll come back to this. This area. You see this. This area has been called Indosphere. This is the area where there has been a great cultural and social, cultural social impact of India on this area. Yeah. Okay. 
say this is bali the island of bali you will find it here the island of bali so when people talk of bali let's go to bali this is bali okay <laughs> indonesia's capital is jakarta for now it is jakarta it may change later okay they are moving the capital from Jakarta to this island. Find out what is the capital here. Yeah. Thailand's capital, as you can see here, Bangkok. B A N G K O K. Who won the first goal for India at the 2022 Commonwealth Games? That's our Mirabai Chanu. She is a world record holder in the 49 kg clean and jerk. Clean and jerk 49 kg category weight lifting category weight lifting category weight lifting category okay she won the gold medal uh, at this year at 2022 and she also oh, in the Tokyo Olympics she won the silver medal Tokyo 2020 summer Olympic Games Tokyo silver medal in the 49 category 49 kg category she won the major dhyan chand khel ratna award in 2018 2018 major dhyan chand khel ratna award okay so in your books now you write 2022 commonwealth games just two three points they are not yet over now so 2023 Commonwealth Games, sorry, 2022 Commonwealth Games. Underline that first point. Host Birmingham, it's there on the screen for you. Birmingham, comma, UK, UK. Next, 72 nations, 72 nations. See, Commonwealth Games would have the Normally, world over, UK would be represented as one country, but within the Commonwealth, you would have the states of UK as Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland, England as separate countries. In fact, they are called separate countries. Okay, so you would have Scotland team fighting against England team. Okay, next 72 nations, third point 280 events, 280 events. In 20 sports, 2-0, 20 sports. Next, Moto, Moto, Sport, S-P-O-R-T, Sport is just the beginning, is just the beginning. Sport is just the beginning. Ah, done. Thanks for being here. That's all from me, Bharat Singh Jain. But remember, as I mentioned, next week there will be two discussions: one on time, Taiwan, the other in, on um, you know India-Pakistan with regard to LOC. Which one will come first? We'll see. Okay. Thank you for being here. Have a lot of fun. Stay curious.